This is the only one of these uncommon summer warblers that I have ever seen. This is a female. The male has a much darker gray head. The field manual shows orange-crowned warblers as migratory summer birds, but I have mostly seen them in winter at the suet feeder. Note the bright yellow eye ring and the curving, almost metallic looking beak. This male in spring shows the faint blush of orange on the crown that gives this warbler its name. Here, a female is hunting for insects inside the sappy unfolding leaves. A juvenile orange-crowned warbler can be identified by the signature shape of the beak. This curious youngster is the only Townsend's warbler I've managed to photograph. You can just see a faint tracing of the black face markings it will have as an adult. This is also the only Wilson's warbler I have ever managed to catch on camera. The yellow warbler is one of our most common and easily seen summer warblers. This is the only all over yellow warbler we have. The males have thin reddish streaks on the breasts and sides. This female yellow warbler has a beak full of food, so she must be feeding a brood of chicks. In spring, the breeding plumage of this female yellow warbler looks magnificent. A yellow warbler fledgling shows little of the bright yellow color of the adults. It remains quiet and well camouflaged. By late summer, the juveniles are beginning to get their adult colors in bright patches of yellow. The yellow-rumped warbler comes in two variations. This rear view shows the signature yellow rump that both variations share. The more common variety the Audubon warbler has a yellow throat and crown, and a solid black chest. Note also the broken white eye ring. The less common variety, the Myrtle warbler, has a streaky breast, a white throat, and a black eye mask. You can sometimes see it mixed in with flocks of Audubon warblers. Females of the two varieties look very similar, more tan-colored and speckled on the breast, but they still have the signature yellow rump. The fledglings of many species are difficult to identify because they look so different from the adults. The identifying field markings for this one are the broken white eye ring and the white spots underneath the tail. Juveniles of both varieties in their first winter look much alike. Both have pale throats, but in this myrtle variation, the white wraps around the cheek.
The common yellowthroat is a migratory songbird that returns around April. Its song remains unmistakable despite regional variations. The female common yellowthroat looks drabber than the male, but still has that yellow throat. This one is carrying a dragonfly that she's going to feed to her chicks. Yellow throats nest on the ground in long grass and defend their nest site with bold courage, calling loudly to distract intruders away. Many juvenile warblers look very similar, but the yellow throat can be identified by the shape and length of the tail. Note the wedge shaped tips on this one's tail feathers. Toward the end of August, the facial feathers on the juvenile male yellowthroat begin to darken as the typical black mask starts to develop. By autumn, the juvenile males have a faded version of the adult's black mask. The young males linger in small gangs after the adults appear to have left for winter migration. The black-throated gray warbler is fairly common but seldom seen. The signature field marking is the yellow spot in front of the eye. The female black-throated gray warbler actually has a white throat, but she still has that signature yellow spot over the eye. This one is gathering materials to build her nest. Fletchling black-throated grey warblers have a paler pattern of markings, but otherwise look similar to females. Warbling vireos are relatively common summer birds, rather plain and seldom seen. Shrikes are predatory songbirds with hooked bills that feed on insects and small vertebrates, and even animals as large as sparrows, shrews, and mice. Though rare, they sometimes winter on Vancouver Island. The very plain-looking male brewer's blackbird is easy to spot with its contrasting pale eye. All birds have amazingly flexible necks. In the bright sunlight, you can see the metallic sheen that preening oil has given to this male's feathers. Brewer's blackbirds are common and widespread on Vancouver Island. I've only seen a few in the Alberni Valley, but I've seen flocks of them in the parking lots in Victoria and Nanaimo. Female brewer's blackbirds look quite different, brown all over with dark eyes. Red-winged blackbirds are very common on Vancouver Island. The males begin bugling as early as December, establishing rank and territory before the females arrive with spring. In June, this male red-winged blackbird is putting on a spectacular display to distract us away from his nest site or perhaps from fledged netslings. 
Male red-winged blackbirds can get quite aggressive, dive-bombing intruders to try and drive them away from the nest site. The female red-winged blackbird looks like a different species. Brown and heavily streaked, it looks like a very large sparrow. But it's check, check, alarm calls give it away. This female red-winged blackbird has a beak full of what looks like mealworms to feed to her nestlings. Brown-headed cowbirds are parasitic, laying their eggs in the nests of other birds and then abandoning them. The host parents raise the cowbird chick sometimes at the expense of their own young. Every summer I see male and female cowbirds strike this pose together. It may be part of a courtship ritual. This cowbird chick is being raised by a pair of yellow warblers. Unlike the warbler chicks, it is noisy and loudly demanding with a voracious appetite, and it is considerably larger than the yellow warbler adults. Juvenile cowbirds, once they can feed themselves, are on their own, and it must take a while for them to find their own kind. Since yellow warblers often get victimized by cowbirds, one could assume the grown cowbirds remember them as exemplary surrogate parents, and so leave their own eggs in the care of yellow warblers. Crows are one of the most intelligent bird species with excellent memories. One of the crows at Harbor Key has stolen a cookie. A gull briefly confiscated it, but the crows won out by pulling its tail feathers until it gave up. Now they are celebrating their triumph. This unusual crow has an overgrown upper mandible and something wrong with its shoulders. It could fly, but it couldn't fold its wings up over its back. Crows are very common and numerous from Alaska to Puget Sound. They stay together in family groups, which can become large flocks. Young crows start out with blue eyes, which darken as they mature. Someone spilled a bag of popcorn at Victoria Key, and the crows are feasting. The young one in the middle is begging, even though there is popcorn in the grass right beside him. This juvenile crow is being lovingly preened by one parent, while the other one keeps a watchful eye on me. Crows are scavengers, and they are not picky eaters. This crow on Rath Trevor Beach has found a fish washed up by the tide. <coughs> ravens are like the big brother of the crow. Note the longer, heavier beak on this raven and the long, ragged feathers at its throat. <coughs> ravens make many and varied calls and are reputed to have a language of over 200 sounds. This juvenile raven found a toy on the beach and spent several minutes carrying it around before abandoning it. I saw this juvenile raven at McLean's Mill begging for food from customers in front of the concession. Ravens are extremely intelligent and social capable of solving complex problems.
called by a variety of names, Grey Jay, Whiskey Jack, Canada Jay, Camp Robber, these fearless birds will steal food right out of your mouth if they can. I have had Grey Jays land on my fingers to take food from my hand. Grey Jays live at higher elevations, often seen at ski resorts, and can be found in every province and territory of Canada. For this reason, plus their bold, friendly attitude that exemplifies the Canadian persona, when the Audubon Society did an online vote, the Grey Jay got voted in to be our national bird, but the federal government has taken no action to make it official. A bird of the west, the Stellar's jay, ranges over most of B.C., south along the coast and down through the Rockies into Mexico. This Stellar jay is collecting acorns and stashing them for a winter food supply. All members of the Corvid family, jays, crows and ravens, share this habit. Jays are the noisy sentinels of the woods, letting other creatures know when predators are around. This fledgling has not yet developed the blue on its belly, which comes from preening oil. While fledglings look plain grey on the front, their flight and tail feathers come in already blue. Like the grey jay, Stellar's jays will steal food, but are more likely to maintain a wary distance. Starlings are an invasive species introduced from Europe, usually seen in flocks, sometimes quite large. These prolific breeders stay all year round and get an early start on the nesting season. Each pair will produce as many as 15 young in a season. This adult starling has just fed its chicks and is now leaving the nest inside this hollow tree. Here is the same tree two years later. Starlings nested in this tree every year until it got cut down. Here, a fledgling is begging for food from a foraging adult. After they fledge, youngsters follow adults around for a week or two, learning how and where to find food. This adult starling is feeding a youngster hidden in the leaves. Here is another fledgling getting fed by its parent. This juvenile is trying to forage for itself, but has mistaken a leaf stem for a caterpillar. By the end of summer, the juveniles are starting to get adult colors, but their heads are still gray. They look like strange little woodpeckers. <laughs> 